Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Acts chapter 10, but before we get started, I want to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Acts chapter 10. In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was the, a captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming towards him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius star stared at him in terror. What is it, sir? He asked the angel. And the angel replied, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. The next day, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up on the flat roof to pray. It was about noon, and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open, and something like a large sheet was set down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. Then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again, Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same voice was repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Peter was very perplexed. What could this vision mean? Just then the, man, the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house, standing outside the gate. They asked if a man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up, go downstairs, and go with them without hesitation. Don't worry, for I have sent them. So Peter went down and said, I am, I'm the man you are looking for. Why have you come? They said, We were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay for the night. The next day he went with them and accompany he went with them, accompanied by some of the brothers from Joppa. They arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up, I am a human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside, where many others were assembled. Peter told them, You know it isn't you know it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. Cornelius replied, Four days ago I was praying in my house about this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once, and it was, it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. 
In every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of, of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were, there, we were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too, for they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. Amen. So what did you think of Acts chapter 10? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. And if you need prayer, make sure you're putting that in the comments too so we can pray together as a community. Okay, so um, Acts chapter 10 starts off with Cornelius calls for Peter. Um, and I wrote off to the side, generously give to the poor and pray regularly. So this um, section um, passage describes Cornelius as a devout, God-fearing man. He gave generously to the po poor and prayed regularly. So in order to, you know, one of the things that when you are devout and God-fearing, you generously give to the poor and you pray regularly. So just keep that in mind in your daily walk. And it says, um, so the angel appeared to him and said, your prayers um, and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Um, so God is receiving, receives all the things that we give to the poor. We're actually giving to God and God hears all of our prayers. Um, so then he asked him to send for Simon Peter. Um, generally, when we start to seek God, he is going to send people our way to draw us closer to him. Um, that's just something that's going to happen. The more time you spend in the word, the closer to God that you will become. And in the, and you know, back then people, they didn't have, you know, Bibles as readily available as we do now, where you can just open your phone and the Bibles on your phone, you know, back then it wasn't like that. So you needed to have people to come and instruct you on the word, to read the word to you and to tell you about the good news. Um, so, you know, it's up to us to kind of do the same thing, you know, bring the word to people who, um, you know, aren't, who don't have access to it or people who maybe don't, reach for it and search for it and look for it um, regularly and just be obedient to God as he's calling you um, in your in your journey if he calls you to somebody or if he's saying you know reach out to this person they can help you in your Christian journey then reach out to them you know don't um, you know be obedient to God in all things um, so then he sent so then he sends for Peter but you know so um, at the same time that around the same time that he's having, you know, he's, you know, having this dream or he's being received by this angel, Peter is also having a vision. Um, and I wrote off to the side, God will prepare the way. Um, thank you, God, for your favor. And thank you for those you send to me. Um, so he fell into a trance and in the vision, um, God was basically telling him that nothing is unclean anymore. It's not like it was back in the Old Testament. Um, so he, he said, 
I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. And that's one of the things that Jesus came to give us freedom from. Freedom from, um, freedom from the religious laws that held us back and kept us in confinement. Um, you know, in those cases, they couldn't welcome Gentiles. They couldn't even go into their homes. But now we can reach out to those people who need to be closer to God. We can open our hearts and our homes to them and, you know, welcome them with open arms. So while he was still puzzled over the vision, um, the Holy Spirit said, three men have come looking for you. Get up and go downstairs and go to them without hesitation. And that's how we should always answer God without hesitation. When God speaks to us, do not hesitate. You know, maybe ask him for more guidance or confirmation, but go and do what he has asked you to do. If you clearly heard him and you clearly know it's from God, do not hesitate because that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Um, so then, um, in verse 28, it says, You know it's against our laws for Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. And that's the same with us. We should not think of anyone as unpure or unclean. There's a lot of people out there that are just lost. They are drifting. They are drifting away. And it's up to us to reel them in, to bring them back to, to God. They are not impure or unclean. You know, just because they're not in the same place that you are in your Christian journey does not mean that we should turn a blind eye to them or, you know, completely shun them. We should constantly be trying to reach out to them. You know, I keep thinking back that, you know, if um, you know, back to when, if God had just given up on me when I was lost, you know, I, I wouldn't be here now. And I'm just so grateful that he didn't give up on me and that I'm here now. And I think it's, there's so many people out there. I think about people who are lost in sexual impurity. They're lost in sexual identity. They're lost in, you know, sins of all different types. And, you know, in, in our eyes, they are un, they're not pure or unclean. But Jesus came to save the sinner. You know, he didn't come to save somebody who's perfect. We are all imperfect and we are all sinners. Nobody is better than anyone else. And that's why I like um, when it says, um, oh, okay, in verse, rewind a little bit, in verse 26, it says, but, um, when, when he first came, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. And Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up. I am a human being just like you. And I just love that. And it's just a reminder that we are not special. I'm not special. You're not special. We are just vessels to be used by God. And, you know, I heard that today. And, you know, God's just giving me confirmation with this scripture. We are not special. We are just vessels to be used by God. And, you know, if anyone, you know, looks at you and is like, oh, well, you know, you know so much about the Bible and, you know, I don't know anything. Well, I'm not special. Like, you you can know as much as I do. Just spend time in the Word. Or you can be used by God as well and do the same things that we can do. Cornelius you know, he is just starting his journey. Peter's been walking with, with God for who knows how long up until this point. I'm not sure. I'm sure somebody might know, and you can comment it below if you do know how long, uh, um, you know, by then he had been walking with Jesus. But um, so Cornelius is just new. So at that time, it was obvious to look to him as somebody, you know, to be respected. But he, the only person he should be falling at their feet is God and in Jesus. That's the only person that you should be kneeling in front of. Um, so it's important to just recognize that and to just know that later on, because Peter was able to be, was obedient to God and called and, and followed the calling to go to Cornelius, that later on Cornelius can have the same abilities that Peter does to heal, to cast out demons, um, to bring people to God, to baptize. So all those things, you know, you're capable of doing through God and through Jesus Christ. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, getting to know God and spending time in his word and growing closer to him and growing in your spiritual maturity every day. You know, it's a process. It's something that we have to work at. Um, so now that they were all here, um, they wanted to hear what message Peter had. And so um, he tells them the message of the good news. And I love how in verse 34 it says, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. And I just love that because a lot of people will be like, oh, you're lucky. Um, but 
you're not lucky. You're a child of God and God shows no favoritism. And when you are a child of God and you are obedient and you spend time in his word and you stay in close relationship with him, you will see God's favor over your life in, in ways that you can't even imagine. Um, so then it says that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. And, you know, I underline that as well because it's true through Christ, through Jesus, there is peace that you will not get anywhere else. Um, so then he tells them the story of, you know, um, John preaching, you know, preparing the way for Jesus and then Jesus coming, um, healing people, casting out demons, then him dying on the cross and then um, him choosing the apostles who then were later saw him after he was resurrected. And um, and then it says that he was um, one of the one he was the one all the prophets testified about in the Old Testament and then um, after hearing the good news the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit and again that's just you know more encouragement to spend time talking to people about Jesus and about God and watch them receive the Holy Spirit watch them be saved by just you ministering to them in your everyday life just talking about how God brought you through something it can be as simple as that you know like I had a flat tire. I was really stressed out. I called on Jesus and he came. You know, I had I had to change my head, my tail light and I didn't screw it in right. So when I put it in, it dropped off in the casing and you know, I was so frustrated at that point and I just prayed to God and he sent somebody to help me you know, get it right. So, you know, simple things like that just telling people those stories about about how God has worked in your life and not letting the enemy silence you like the enemy will silence you and try to keep you from you know testifying about how God is helping you sometimes he'll say that's too little or they don't care or they don't want to hear or that wasn't really God um, and we have to stop listening to the enemy um, I heard in my, in my sermon my Sunday service it was like get out of my garden like get out of my head enemy like you are not welcome here and you know I really have I know I personally have to get better at you know spreading the good news and telling people how Jesus has helped me and giving God the glory for everything um, so then it says that um, so then they were they got they received the gift of the Holy Spirit and this kind of goes to what I was saying about them laying hands on um, what was his name I think his name was Simon too oh when Philip um, yeah his name was Simon so the guy um, Simon that was like a, a sorcerer and then he converted and be in um, how he saw people he saw them laying hands um, laying hands and giving them the power giving people the power of the Holy Spirit so in this case these people received the Holy Spirit before they were baptized which a lot that ha I've seen that happen a lot that people are receive the Holy Spirit they get convicted and that's what leads them to want to be baptized and claim the um, you know and and commit to God and in 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 front of other people confess in front of people in front of witnesses um, so he asked if anyone objected to their being baptized and they didn't and so he gave the orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus and afterwards Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days because obviously you know I know when I'm around somebody and I can talk about Jesus I get so excited and it's like I don't want that the time goes by so fast when I'm talking about Jesus and I don't want it to end and I'm like no don't go Let's talk about Jesus all day long. I just want to be surrounded by people who I can talk to about Jesus and about God and about um, just the word. Um, so that is my interpretation of Acts chapter 10. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence, and have a great rest of your day. I love you.